So the 2021 EZO 98 is here, one of the most hotly anticipated racket releases of the year, and you only have one question, is this racket good? So much like the VCore Pro release we saw, most of the changes with the 2022 version focus on increasing stability while retaining, if not improving, feel. So Yonix has thickened up key portions of the beam. Hopefully this helps with off-center shots, but they've also added a new material called 2G NIMD Speed to the shaft, and this is to make a more powerful response, but also improve ball feedback. One thing I haven't loved with Yonix's rackets lately is the VDM in the handle. To me, it just robs a little bit too much of the feel on contact. So we'll see if this new material leads to any serious improvements on the court. So let's start off with potential energy. Now this area is not a huge forte for the EZO 98 and that is because maneuverability and ease of use is a key player for this frame. The target demographic is for players looking for good control and comfort but in a really accessible and user-friendly frame. They've kept on target here. The swing weight is 318 which is very maneuverable and accessible in this 98 square inch category. The stiffness comes in at 65, which is a nice medium stiffness, something I really like. This usually leads to decent energy return just from the frame. And you also will see this with elliptical, more oval shaped shafts that are also present in the EZO 98 line. So I would have definitely liked a little bit more put away power for my game, but I think given the target demographic, that 318 swing weight hits the mark and I wouldn't ask them to sacrifice maneuverability in this case. That brings the potential energy score to 113. Next to some similar performing rackets, let's check out the Head Extreme Tour at 112. Up from there is the Pure Strike 100 at 113, the Radical MP at 115, and then lastly, the previous version, EZO 98, also comes in at 115. Small caveat, you'll notice that I've rated this version lower than previous version. I felt like I could access a little bit more power with the last version, contrary to what the specs actually read. Um, but those are average specs and my demos may not always line up to the average spec, um, which is something that is po impossible to account for. So next up, we've got the string bed performance. Now, I think this is a really standout feature of this racket. I've really been testing some great performing string beds lately. Gone are the days where manufacturers were making just the most spin friendly, most open string patterns possible. And these kind of more tighter variable string patterns are really coming into fashion. Now, what I love about these tighter 16 by 19 string patterns is the center of the string bed is often a bit tighter. That really gives you a lot of confidence once you've lined a ball up because you know it's not going to fly in you whether you're knifing a hard slice or smoking a big top spin shot and the harder you hit it it's just going to give you more ball speed and you really don't have to worry about losing that ball out due to an unpredictable launch angle on the other hand on off center shots the string bed is a little bit more open. This more open string bed leads to a higher launch angle, which buys you a little bit of forgiveness when you miss hit the ball. It also will buy you a bit of time because the ball will travel higher over the net, giving you more time to recover. So I think this is a really standout feature here. The string bed performance is going to score 100. Next to some similar rackets, we've got the Radical Pro at 96. So a little bit lower launch angle, tighter pattern there. Up, we've got the Extreme Tour at 97. The previous version, EZO 98 at 102. I felt like I was getting a bit higher arc on my spin shots with that racket, hence the higher score. And then the V Core 98, which is really geared towards more spin with a more open pattern at 100. Now the last category here is weight distribution. Now this is honestly something I kind of struggled on this frame with. I would have liked better stability out of the EZO 98, especially given that the beam design was really focused on enhancing some stability and power. I felt like on off-center shots, I was really fighting the racket. It was twisting in the hand. 
in a way that I really wasn't expecting. I never had stability issues with the previous ESO 98, but here I felt like I was just getting punished anytime the opponent targeted my backhand or hit a big deep ball. I really struggled on my backhand here because my swing speed isn't as high as it is on my forehand. When your swing speed's not as high, you have to rely a little bit more on your racket for stability and power. Whereas when you have a high swing speed, you can transfer a lot of the energy from your body just into the ball. So the score for the EZO 98 is gonna be at 106. Now lower score is going to represent faster feeling rackets that may not feel as stable on off-center shots, but you can really accelerate up the back of the ball and are great for spin. Down from there, so a bit more geared towards maneuverability is going to be the Extreme Tour at 104. A little bit more stable than the EZO 98 is the lighter Gravity MP at 107. And then up from there is the Radical MP at 108. For reference, last year I felt the ESO 98 performed much better in terms of stability, which is why it got a score of 112. I think this is a really interesting choice, especially when you look at something like the Blade 98, where I felt like it was really stable, but still plenty maneuverable. I was expecting Yonex to go a little bit more stable here. While I do appreciate its lightness, and its speed, I question whether that many players are going to get success with it because of that lack of stability. That said, if you're a one-handed backhand player, I think you'll absolutely love this frame. Typically, one-handers are gonna have much higher racket head speed than a two-hander, so that's definitely a place where your playing experience is gonna vary quite differently than my playing experience. So all in all, the ESO 98 still really feels like an ESO 98. The contact feel is great. It's got very nice ball pocketing. I think the feel is more direct than the previous version. I felt at times that racket felt a bit too muted for my taste. And I think here you're getting just a little bit more responsiveness out of that string bed. And I think that's a great improvement. Now, if you'd like to see me compare the Easel 98 to anything else on the market, drop a comment down below. And if you want to see my favorite racket in this category, I recommend you check out the Extreme Tour.